Welcome to this Telia talk. Today we're recording at the Internet of Things Symposium in Stockholm, where we've so far had a full day of invention and solution within the machine-to-machine -machine area. But now we will talk about how all these inventions and solutions are made, and how to be more innovative. With me is Greg Brando, fro formerly at Pixar, now you're traveling the world, talking about how organizations can be more innovative. Anne Grane from HPE, one of the world's biggest tech companies, and Hans Dahlberg from Telia Company and the innovative hub called Division X. Let me first start with you, Greg. One of your main points is that many big companies seem to have problems to become more innovative. They know they have to, but not necessarily how. Sure. So. Let me first talk about uh, what, does, what is an innovation, right? So everybody thinks it's usually a iPhone or a Tesla or something like this, but we define it as just something that's novel and useful. So once you break it down that way, you can then start talking about, thinking about how are you re relating to your customers, how are you doing your manufacturing, how are people interacting with each other across the company. So it also requires that the senior leadership think about how they organize the company maybe a little bit differently. Instead of working on certain KPIs, maybe they would focus on how they take care of their employees or what kind of employees they're hi hiring or amplifying differences between employees because diversity of thought matters a lot, so amplifying differences will actually help you come up with better solutions. Uh, and often what happens is that companies hire in really talented people and then they squish that and compress it down into this and you don't get anything. Um, and then along with that, other company, you know, companies often make the mistake of just having a single innovation center that is not tied in with the rest of the company, as though the rest of the company doesn't have any good ideas. Uh, so they're like really great ideas that come out of innovative innovation centers, but somehow the communication doesn't get back to the company. And when you actually have a nice innovation center going, you'll have those ideas sparking ideas inside with the other employees, and the other employees are feeding back into the innovation group, you know, here are the things that we should be working on. So it's these kinds of things that I think you would want to work at. And Hans, we both work in Telia Company, and you're working in one of those innovation centers. How have you done this? Because Telia has a history of innovation. We were among the first to start working on mobile technology. And then, then it was a few decades when not so much innovation happened, and now you're starting. Are you afraid of this to happen, as Greg's described? No, I'm not actually. And, and as you say, we are one of the more innovative uh, telcos globally, actually. We were the one who spearheaded mobile telephony with Ericsson. We were the first to actually deploy 4G and we also launched a new product called Telia Sense, the world's first as well. So we're doing quite a lot of things. But I think as a big company, it starts with communication and culture. So even though we have this innovation hub in Division X, I think uh, when it comes to culture, it's about communication. And we are saying that we will be the new Gen Telco. And just saying this throughout the companies every day and being customer focused, that implies that you will do innovation close to the customer. And that's exactly what you talked about, is doing the day-to-day -day innovation. Of course, there are some spearhead projects that needs to have maybe some certain tools in order to take off, and that's actually what we are working in within Division X. So, but I think it's actually throughout the company, and you should um, really emphasize the importance of, of building new business development kind of processes, regardless if we, you are working in a content center just handling customer day to day, you could do things innovative in that space as well. And HPE, that is a whole other story. You were doing everything for everyone, and now you decided to grow small. Why is that? So when we were born in Palo Alto 75 years ago, I mean, we were all about innovation. You know, we were born in a garage and our company, we, uh, we deliver new innovation products to the market constantly. But then something happened. We became, of course, we were successful. So we grew and we grew and we grew and we are like the biggest IT company on the planet. But then we realized in the digitization, when everything goes so fast and where you really need to make sure that you are relevant, 
size is not helpful. So what we decided to do was actually to spin off and merge parts of our company to protect our core, to protect what really is our core competence, which is really what we did back then in the garage in Palo Alto. So what we're doing now is we're resizing and we're refocusing back to what we did before so that we are going to be the most innovative technology company for the next 10 years. Um, our conclusion is we need to be smaller, we need to be nimbler, and we need to work in partnerships with like the tele company and the other players in the digital ecosystem. So that's what we're doing. And I think it's really a long line with what we see and what we hear when people talk about the change that is needed on the market to make IoT and digitization happen. So it's really a big transformation that we're doing and it takes a lot of leadership, uh, but the vision is clear. We're going to be smaller and nimbler and we're going to be the best technology partner driving innovation on this planet. So. You mentioned the ecosystem and that is you know, the word on, on everybody's lips nowadays, it seems. Not at least in the bigger companies. It seems almost to me like big companies have given up the idea of creating ideas of the, their own. They have a lot of money so they can buy ideas from these garage companies. Is that a, f a way for us to to succeed? So if I were to give the HPE point of view on that, I think that you, in the core competence of your company, in order to stay relevant, you need to invest to stay relevant. To, to, so as HPE, we need to invest means to continue our long-term R&D development that will bring the machine to the market. But we should not be naive. We also need to work together in partnership with other players, other software companies, other ISVs, other server integrators, telcos, because no one can own the end user in the digital world. It's a partnership, it's a partnering play where it's so key to be relevant. So in that sense, yes, protect your core and your relevance, but team up and partner. It's not realistic to think that you can have all innovation that is required to create that super customer experience that we know that our impatient end customer requires from us today. Even if you are as big as HPE? Yes, even if we are as big as HPE, we want and we need to partner up with the small companies, the mid-sized companies and even the big companies to create that value for the customer. Greg, well, when I was listening to you during the day, um, you were talking very much about people and structure. What is most important? To hire the, the Leonardo da Vinci, so the Marie Curies, or that you can take almost anyone from the street and in the right environment, they will do amazing things? So that's a really interesting question. And I think you need a blend. Uh, you're not gonna, it's just not possible to hire all the Madame Curies on the planet, right? Uh, so then what do you do to take advantage of uh, the people that you can have? And so you need to look at people. Almost everybody that I've worked with is good at something. And so the trick, I think, of a manager is to bring out the best and all the people that you're working with. And if you can partner, you know, the Madame Curies up with a great team that support her, then you're going to come up with something better. And in fact, that's what we did at Pixar. So John Lasseter was the creative genius, and there were things that he didn't know how to do. And so we plugged in, you know, the gaps around him, and that team, as a result of that, was more powerful. And actually, to your point, Anna, about being partners, uh, it's not only if you think about ecosystems in terms of a business, with inside of your own business, you can also have an ecosystem of people that have different skill sets that bring something to the table. When we talk about innovation, it seems to me that it's almost like a fairy tale figure that everybody talks about and, and tries to understand, but is it really something that different from ordinary problem solving, like building a bridge or managing the, the um, uh, municipality transport system. What do you say, Hans? Well, for me, I, uh, my definition of innovation in this purest form is that you take two ideas and form a new idea from that. So you take two different needs or two different solutions, bake that into one. So clearly, it's no different between building a bridge 
or uh, meeting a customer or doing new things. But you need to think sometimes for your dimensional. Uh, maybe you need to pour in some new experience from adjacent industries and see what you could do with these kind of ideas in your industry. So that's typical innovation for me. Greg, you've been traveling the world looking into this to different companies and how they have managed. But if we lift it to a more macroeconomic environment, are we well fitted in the Western world to cope with uh, competition when it comes to innovation? Or is it uh, this done in China or in India in a better way nowadays? Ah, that's a really good question. So um, I actually think in the Western world that we're very good at teaching our kids to be creative. And that's where innovation comes from. And uh, if you actually look at the things that are coming out of India and China, mostly now, but not necessarily in the future, uh, they're doing our manufacturing for us. And so like if you look at the Apple products as an example, it says designed in California, but manufactured in China. And so the creativity of the design of the new thing is happening you know, wherever, like California or you know, Sweden, whatever. Uh, and may maybe manufacturing is happening in another place. So I do think that uh, the ability to organize and hire creative people is actually m more fundamental than being able to just execute on building something. Although curiously, you're going to become very good at manufacturing if you're the one doing all the manufacturing in the world. So. And also, you both work within digitalization in a, in a broader uh, perspective, uh, is digitalization as a force demanding something new from companies like you to be innovative? I, I think again, going back to my comment about focus, I think it's very important to understand as I represent technology innovation here that technology innovation on its own has no value. It's the combination of technology innovation, business process in innovation, and then new business models that really creates the difference. And in order to do that, HP on its own, we cannot succeed. We need to partner up, like you said as well, across industries, you know, across the, the ecosystem in order to pair our technology innovation. And sometimes we don't even know what we're question we're trying to address. We're just kind of mingling around in the ecosystem and then suddenly there is this idea, what if we could do it like this together in a partnership? And I think that's true innovation in the digital area. Uh, just to add to this, I think going digital or digital is more a tool that of course could help you out being uh, innovative. But at the end of the day, it's very much about business re-engineering. And I think it, sometimes you could have a gap between the business process and the business re-engineering and the knowledge about the new technical tools. And then, of course, if you have this kind of ecosystem and you could mingle around, as you say, then you could often see some solution for a business process re-engineering problem that you had earlier on, but you didn't know that there was a technology that existed that could help you out with this. Yeah, and I want to piggyback on what you both said. <laughs> um, I think that actually a really important point that you make here is that having an ecosystem and, and partnering up really matters because if UHP are really good at technology, that doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily know what your end user, and by end user I mean a customer in their home might need, which is a different thing than having a business to business relationship, right? And with Telia, you're probably touching the customer in their home and you have a much closer relationship to that. And so the combination of the two of you is going to be way more powerful right, than, <laughs> than, than <laughs> the combination of the two of you seriously is going to be way more powerful yeah. than either of you could be by yourselves. Yeah, absolutely. And then also, you know, when you're developing a new technology, everybody thinks about technology as being innovation. The reason to have to, the reason an innovation sticks is because it's solving somebody's problem. So you can have a nice piece of technology that's really cool, but if it's not really solving anybody's problem, then how is that really useful? Mm. So that's actually why in our book, we define it as being novel and useful, yeah. right? Which is what you guys are basically saying as well. It's just like, you have to have an ecosystem. Mm. And then, you know, the other thing I realize that the word ecosystem maybe is, is tired, but no company has all of the skills that are needed to solve any particular problem. 
And so by definition, you're just going to have to partner. There's just no way. And all the companies that we looked at, that was the case. I think that was a great end to this discussion. We could go on forever, but we need to stop. Thank you very much for participating. And thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.